Hello and welcome to Animation Chapter 4, Lesson 6. Now, in this particular example, there is enough uh, different elements uh, for the animation that I actually loaded the solution to give you an idea of what this thing would look like, both when you loaded it up, how you inserted things, how things look as it changes as we go along. So the very first thing it wants you to do is open FL4 underscore 10A, which it looks like this. You've got the car go, and there you go, and that's the extent. And then you have the fly-in text, but it actually doesn't do anything yet, but these are the elements you work with. Um, and it says, you know, press the period key to go back and forth. It says click edit. I'm on number 8. Um, you select all the frames, and you're basically... basically pasting the frames at frame 72. So the way that's actually going to look when you actually put that together is you have, if, if you look at your car go and you paste that at the very end, you'll see that um, it actually pastes at the very end right here starting at 72. So you're taking the these elements right here, you're highlighting, you're pushing, you're highlighting it, shift, and then you're copying it so you're copying it from here all the way to 72, which is going along, or what's going on on 4-44. Now what's going on in 4-45 is you are actually creating, you're using the presets to create this classic car club fly in from the left. So you're actually flying it in from the left and you're going so far as to use the fly in text with the alignment. And when it's talking about um, fit and window, motion tween, let's see if I can find what stage they do. At, at any rate, when you go and you're working with the alignment, it's actually uh, windows and you want your align button that looks like this, that's, that's go actually going to align it in the middle. So right now, I can click it. Obviously, it's not going to do anything because it's already aligned in the middle. But if it was, for instance, uh, let me move it over a little bit. If I actually had this and it was moved over, let's say there, if I align it in the middle, that's what it's going to look like. And that's how that kind of works. So you're align it horizontal center. All right. So we've done our, we do our change frames, and we're aligning it. And this is actually similar to 4-45, figure 65 and 66. And this is a difference between our frame 80 and here. So we're actually having it, if you look, here, let me, let me hide all these so you get a general idea of the way this particular frame is going to look. <laughs> so it's flying in, and there we go. And that's the whole thing. And the actual fly-in takes place between 1 and 24. And it's just extended out to 80, meaning that's on the screen until 80. So that takes care of 4-44 and 4-45. Now as we move on to 4-46, uh, it says insert a new layer and name it rotate text. So I'm going to hide all the rest of these layers, and I'm going to unhide rotate text. Now... It says, insert a keyframe in frame 24. So now we're looking, we're at this frame right here, and we're at frame 24. You'll see there's a keyframe right there. If I move this along, that's where annual starts coming up. Click the text tool. So what they did with this annual is they came along, and they actually changed it to 24, bold, and blue. So there's bold, and there's blue. And we're putting a motion tween. So our motion tween is between here and here. So as I scroll this across, you'll notice I've got the circular. And if I look at number 8, click frame 24, properties panel, two times with clockwise direction. So here we have our rotation. Um, if we look at it on page 24, and two times clockwise, clockwise so there's our twice. 3, 1, 2, right? And you'll notice... Now, it, it, our rotate two times direction path, it doesn't really give us one that, but it's actually occurring here. So we should be able to see our two times clockwise. And it says point to the end of the tween span until the pointer changes to a double pointer, then drag the pointer to frame 34 as shown in figure. So it's actually dragging this between here and 34. So what's happening is, is I'm making the spin take place 
between here and 34. So we've got a spin. It says click frame 80 on the rotate, rotate text layer, then insert a keyframe in 80. So I'm actually inserting another keyframe way out here. So it keeps that text standardized, and the way it flies in is spin, spin. There we go. All right. Now it says insert a new layer, name it zoom text. So here's my new layer. There's zoom text right there. And I want to insert a keyframe on 44, which is right there. Now click the text tool, and what I'm doing is I'm positioning the pointer beneath the annual text block, then type road rally. So there's our road rally. And it's really tiny. And I want to insert motion tween the free transform tool and scale button. So what I'm doing is with I have this selected, I want to make sure I'm choosing my free transform tool, which is going to be this bad boy here, and then I'm going to look for the scale button, which should be down here in the options. Um, then I want to go ahead and change it to frame 80, and notice as it goes across, I'm going to scale it to be larger using the upper left hand corner, so I've got this thing now where this one appears. Oh, it's going to appear here and grow. So road rally is coming in from the distance and then growing. And then, and once again, you're doing this per item. The next one's going to be our continue. So I'm going to hide that one. I'm going to show our continue. Insert a keyframe in frame 72. So I'm going to go all the way back here. And I'm going to go to frame 72, which is right here. Um, and this is where we're going to change click to continue. So here's our click to continue. And this is where I got uh, 12 point, um, drag the pointer over the text, select it, then change the character size and properties to 12. So I'm actually coming in here. I'm changing it now. They said button. Let's see, position and size. I want to change. Let's grab my text tool here. And then I should be able to click. Oh, nope. Silly text tool. And I should be able to come along. It's not cooperating at all. Hold on a minute. So we're going to edit, undo text. So let's reread. Drag the pointer over the text and select the change character size property. And once we have it, our, then click selection tool on tools panel and verify the text box is selected. Click modify. Oh, that's why. Because we've already gone through and converted this to a symbol itself. So our B continue has been converted to an actual symbol. So if I wanted to change that font, I would actually have to double click on this and then come in and now I can change the font as appropriate. I can come in. It is now 12 point and blue. So I'm good where that's concerned. Insert a keyframe a down. And then so what I'm doing is if you remember when we did our items before, we've got different uh, properties where this is concerned and we're changing our we have our up, there's our over, what it looks like, there's our down, and there's our hit. And our hit is the area with which we can actually hit that value. So I'm going through and I'm creating a button very similar to the way I created a uh, the button before. And you notice now we have a play. It says display the actions panel. So what we're doing is we're uh, selecting and creating an action as it relates to that. So display the action panel, if I remember correctly. Windows, where's my, there's my action panel right there. So I've added an action to this particular item for, see on the top left, and return to the timeline. So for a hit on our select tool uh, on the menus panel, then click, click to continue button on the stage, um, add a new item. So our, here's our current selection right there and there's our continue and we've actually for our continue I went through and we added this uh, global functions timeline control and play and there's our play option and notice I have the on release meaning it's related to when you actually click on the button similar to when we did the uh, functions before as I explained and in this section where we added a button uh, previously. Then once we're through all that, we should be able to, I, I can go back to my scene, so let me change this, and I'm going to go back to my scene. Not making a scene, ha ha ha. So now I'm going to display it all, and when it runs, notice everything kind of builds in and of itself, 
And if I do, uh, let's see, I want to test the movie itself. I don't test movies very often, you could tell. Is it commands? Nope. Control. Oh, boy. All right, so I would then go to test the movie, and I can test it in my flash. Uh, let's see, insert it there, keyframe, timeline, control, test movie. There we go, I always forget. Control, test movie, in flash, professional, classic car club, annual, road rally, boom. And it starts over. So everything's related to that. You don't have to make the noise, of course, but there you go. Now, you'll notice as you go through this one, I have a lot of different elements inter interrelating and working right here. The gist of what you should get out of here is basically being able to animate individual text. and But now you're starting to get the idea how you're, everything's kind of working together. That actually concludes Chapter 6, excuse me, Chapter 4, Lesson 6, Animating Text, specifically uh, all the items involving Lesson 6. I hope this has been uh, fairly uh, educational, and this will uh, now conclude with assignments on Flash 4-50, 4-52, and 4-53. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Otherwise, uh, good luck, and it's good that you're here.